All right, continuing with our animation transformation project using PhotoP and Freeware. We were starting our storyboard sketch last class, so I'm going to open up PhotoP. And then I'm going to drag this PSD. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to name it. This is going to be my assignment three storyboard sketch. I'm putting my name in it. And this is the first thing that we'll submit for the assignment, our rough storyboard sketch. This is our plan for how our short GIF transformation animation will work. Okay, now that I've named it before I open it in PhotoP, it will keep that name and it will keep updating within my folder. Okay, now we went through this in the last video. We have to showcase a transformation, not just a movement but a full transformation. And we looked at Monty Python, uh, stop motion animation, just using magazine cutouts from like the 60s and the 70s. And this is a good template for GIF animations. It's rough, it's quick, it's most uh, effective when it shows a big change in a short amount of time, all within one scene. So I need to choose what pixels have I already created in the class that I want to use in my animation? And in the other class, I am doing a demo of my creature in its landscape. So this was my sketch for my other class. First, I introduced the setting, then I introduced the character coming into the setting, and then the character moves and turns. Arrows are very helpful for rough storyboards. And then very similar to that Monty Python example, this Terry Gilliam animation example, my creature is going to start eating the candy landscape, but instead of like nibbling on it, like you would expect, all the things are just going to get sucked into its mouth, kind of Kirby style. And then the character is going to be all alone in an empty landscape, and then it's going to vomit it all back up. And then the character will exit, and then it's, it sets to reset, right? So that's kind of complicated because those assets include the character or the creature in this case, the landscape, but then the landscape has to be broken up into a ton of different components for them each to get sucked into the mouth, like each of these cutouts of people and lamps and pictures on the wall. And I'm using Photoshop for that and I'm showing that in the YouTube channel, right? PhotoP is not that different than that, but its processing isn't quite as powerful. So I'm going to be a little more direct. And instead, I'm just going to transform from one thing into another thing. So instead of using my, my creature design for this, I am going to use my exercise to custom emoji. Right? So I'm going to use this guy, my my Bucky emoji. And then how am I going to transform that? I can transform it in a lot of ways. And I'm thinking it would be funny if this was the last animation or the last frame so that something transforms into this. So I'm going to bring over a few things into my assignment three folder from my exercise two. I'm going to bring over my finished PNG which is here, and I'm going to bring it over and copy it by holding down Option. And then I'm also going to bring over my PSD, my one with all of the different layers, because these are good animation assets to use. And we'll see if I actually use them or not. And then I'm thinking, what am I going to transform it into? I want to use fire, and I want to like burn one emoji and have like the fire dissipate, and what it reveals is this emoji, because this looks like a burnt husk of something that was cuter at one point, right? And in my other class for exercise two, I created this cute emoji, this guy, which is Bandit from Johnny Quest. 
And so it would be fun to uh, to animate this guy a little bit and have him burn up and turn into the cat, right? So I'm going to bring over these as well, the PNG and the PSD. Okay. So these are now going to inf going to inform my sketch. I want to know how I'm starting. I want to know what is transforming and how it ends. My sketch does not need to be really beautifully drawn. It just needs to be informative. It needs to help me know what I'm trying to do. So if I'm starting with this guy, I can just write that in. So I'm going to use a pressure sensitive brush. Not too big. Keep the opacity a little low. Okay, and I'm going to start with the beginning. When you begin your animation, you're always just introducing your audience to the things that you want them to pay attention to. So I'm going to start with Cute Bandit. This is an introduction of a character element, right? This is the thing that the audience is going to be viewing the animation through. He's got a little bit of drool and he's smiling. So this is introducing character and I'm just going to make it character X, right? And then at the end, this is the transformation. I'm going to be showing my Bucky cat emoji that looks very dark, the opposite of happy. And this is going to be introducing character Y. So now I have seven frames to help tell that story and make it visually interesting. I don't want to make it just a slow morphing of one into the other. I want to really show a transformation. So this is why we do it as a three on three grid because we want a beginning, a middle and an end. So what can happen at the beginning? How can I play with the viewer's expectations a little bit? I can have this character looking happy and I want to show it drooling a little bit. So I'm going to have the drool kind of come down or it's panting. That's the action. I'm going to make this a little smaller. So kind of moving up and down, and you can use arrows in your storyboard. It can be very helpful. So just like a happy dog would, right? But that's some movement. The dog's head is, I'm animating the emoji. Maybe the eyes move a little bit. Maybe not. I don't want to make it too complicated. All right, then what starts to happen? At the end of the beginning, we're starting to set up. He's going to have a worried look. His eyebrows might get uneven or something. Because what's going to happen is he's going to start catching on fire. But he doesn't know that yet. This is just setting that up. So, worried expression. And maybe I'm going to start turning him red. For some reason he's going to spontaneously combust. And I'm just thinking this through as I'm doing it. Okay, so now when we get to the middle, this is when we should have a big change of state happen in a transformation. You want it to be visually really recognizable. So we have kind of a slow start. Now he's going to get redder and redder. And he's going to start to sizzle. Kind of building it up. It feels like animal cruelty, but it's just an emoji. Okay. Then, right at the center point of our storyboard, flames will erupt. Hmm. 
and I'm just keeping this head centered the whole time so it's very focused. Flames will erupt. And now he's going to look unhappy. <laughs> right? And then those flames are going to grow. So it can be a very, very loose drawing, as long as you understand what you're going for. Okay? And then he's going to start to get burned up. He's going to go from being bright red and white hot, right, to starting to gray out. And ash, as the flames start to die down a little bit, they're consuming their fuel. And then, it's just going to be kind of a charcoal briquette. that is steaming. And then that's going to reveal the other emoji. Okay, so we have a transformation from beginning. It's just a simple motion test, but already in the beginning, first three keyframes, you should hint at what the actual transformation will be. Transformation isn't a change of expression. Transformation means there's a change of state from beginning, middle to end. So what's the hint we have? Well, he starts to turn red. Animals don't usually just change a different color, right? So it's beginning a transformation. And then that transformation builds, flames erupt, the flames grow. That's the big kind of turning point. That's the major transformation that we're showcasing. And then in the end, it shows the consequences of that transformation. It dies down, turns into a charcoal briquette, and then reveals this other character. Now, that's what I need for my storyboard, but for my animation, it would be best if I can then set it to reset. So in this case, it might be that I can just reverse the frames and have it go from this to a briquette to flames to revealing a happy dog, right? It can go back and forth. Or I might just crossfade this into the, the first frame. So we'll see what makes sense. Okay, so this is my sketch. I understand it. I'm going to save it, export it as a JPEG. As long as it transforms, because GIFs go on and on and on, right? So when I say set to reset, I think it's best if by the end we're thinking of how it's going to transition back to the beginning. So it can loop back and forth as long as there's a transformation for it to loop from. What I don't want is just like an emoji with like the mouth going from a smile to a frown because that's just more like a, a movement test and not a full transformation of something or like the eyes moving. So like changing color, changing the environment behind them. Um, maybe they cough something up, <laughs> you know, that would be like a, a transformation. And I'll show some, some more examples or show you where you can get further inspiration. All right, so my sketch is now there. My JPEG has been saved. I'm going to mark that with orange. And I can just go ahead and put that right into the assignment because that's the first thing we need to turn in is our rough storyboard sketch. Now we need nine frames for our storyboard sketch, but that doesn't mean we only are going to do nine frames for our animation. It's just going to be a minimum of nine frames for the animation.